Hey guys, Sableye here, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are here with an absolutely wild team that actually managed to finish top four in the February International Challenge over the past weekend. And you know what? I figured I'd try it out. Uh, full credits to the creator of the team. Everything you need for that will be in the description down below. So feel free and make sure you check them out. And uh, without further ado, I say we jump right into things. And here we go, guys. We got our battle. It was like 10 minutes for me, but like zero. And we're gonna get rank number five immediately. This was not the way I anticipated to start this episode, but uh, this is definitely a pretty hype way to start it. Although I haven't played a game with this team yet, so this could get ugly pretty fast. But hey, um, so I learned a little bit about their underreport, as much of the Japanese that I could understand, to be completely honest. It was basically the concept here is you're gonna go in DD Kira do a bunch of damage early and then have your Zashian for the late game. I think in a case like this, I can kind of keep up with that, you know? I think I can continue that concept. And I don't really think Ferrothorn's all that good, I don't think it does a lot here. I think like a Leki and Zashian endgame is just really, really nice. I could technically go a Leki, a, a Leki Kyurem lead, which actually might, which actually just kind of seems a little nicer. In fact, forget about Indeedee. I'm gonna go Aleki Kyurem Zashian, and I almost want Hydra Gun. Cause like, realistically, it does work here. The only problem with Hydra Gun is the Zashian, and none of the other ones actually beat Zashian anyways. I'm gonna try it. I'm, I'm gonna give it a shot, see if this AV Hydra Gun can actually do something here. Uh, team is absolutely wild, absolutely wild. I'm looking looking forward to trying this out, getting to explore it a little bit, but like Hyper Voice, Hydra God instead of just like Flamethrower or you know like why, why Hyper Voice like I, I really wish I could like I don't know I wish I could understand the team report I think it's probably the way I should be raising this but this is perfect for me like I think I don't think I could have got a better lead like this is free Electro Web for me right this is Electro Web I can kind of ignore the Blastoise right now I'm gonna hinder it by slowing it down right now anyways and I think I want to just drop a Hailstorm like, I really just kind of want to go for this. Because unless they're maxing Calyrex, they're not surviving this. Yeah, I'm going to try this. I mean, they could go protect Calyrex and max Cannonade with the Blastoise into the Regilecki, which is actually super problematic. However, do I think that's what they're going to go for? I want to say no. I'm, I don't think they will. But uh, we're gonna, they're going to stay in with both, which so far so good means absolutely not a whole lot, but hey, it's something. I, I mean, if I lose a Leki, it just waltzes on in with Hydra Gun here, which I think is more than enough. Is it? Eh, more than enough is probably the wrong word, but I do think they're going to max this Blastoise. I could also see maybe a fake out with Blastoise, just fake out Astro Barrage, I could see as well. But I think right now they're super inclined to battle max it right now. And given that dive ball right there, that, that's what you guys see coming. If they're not mad, they don't catch Calyrex in a dive ball. Yeah, no, that's a big old Blastoise. Which I'm okay with if they let me take the Calyrex. If they give me the Calyrex, this is a perfectly fine turn. Okay? I was about to say, did I miss? But they're just Wakan Berry. So I'm okay seeing that. We get the chip damage down. Calyrex gets slowed down. Kirama should be faster. I didn't actually check the speed tier here. But I'm assuming it's fast enough to outpace what it needs to outpace right now. Okay, beautiful. I'm gonna get the big old max hailstorm from this Kyurem. It should drop Calyrex, no problem. Perfect. And that's how we do it. That was a solid start. I, I don't know, Kyurem's really cool. Like, Kyurem's one of those Pokemon that just kind of kills the entire format, but also dies to the entire format. So it's like finding the right balance of when you need to attack versus when you need to kind of not attack and like if you can actually preserve your pieces. Uh, I'm gonna lose. Could Aleki just live that? I mean it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter because of hail and the cannonade chip but like just the fact that I straight up live that says a whole lot of no Blastoise. Um, obviously there are very defensive Blastoise here. I feel like Aleki should never be living that. We could also be a bulky Aleki. Tough to say for sure. Uh, I'm gonna walk in with my Zashian now. Just because I think I need to get the offensive damage output out here. Uh, I could max guard as well, which is something that I can consider. But I think the max guard is super obvious, so I'm also just going to attack. They're going to bring in Zashian. Now, I'm a slower Zashian, more than likely, but I'm adamant with, I believe, I think it's like 236 attack or something. 
I'd have to double check the rental code, but like, I know it should be enough for Astro Barrage plus, not Astro Barrage, for Behemoth Blade plus Quick Attack to knock out his Ashian. So there's a chance, if they're not bulky at all, that I just take their Zashian out in general. Now I, I don't want to guard here. I know it kind of seems dumb not to guard, but I think if I double the Zashian here, it puts me in a pretty solid spot. Zashian could protect and bite me, but I don't think they will. I think they're going to hit Kyurem. Maybe I should have max guard. Like, max guard was the correct play, right? I just thought it was way too obvious. You know? But then again, I guess they don't think their Zashian is threatened right now. And maybe this was a bit aggressive on my end, right? Maybe I just thought they double Zashian. But uh, regardless, we're going to get this big old Behemoth split off here. If we can kill, or at least put it in quick attack range, I think we might be alright. Does so much damage. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more. Because the problem now is we might die to Cannonade plus Hail. And if we die to Cannonade plus Hail, the game is over. Ah, uh, yeah, we're dead. Uh, oh, come on! I was fine! I was fine until that happened. I was literally gonna be fine until that happened. Nah, that's so unfortunate because I had the free quick attack into their Zashian, which they thought, oh hey, I'm faster, I don't need to worry about anything right now. And their Zashian would have gone down. Granted, we might not have been able to pull this back. I still would like to know what their last one is, but now we're not gonna get to know. You know? Now we're not gonna get to go. I have to hyper voice on the off chance I get chip damage on both here. But I'm gonna lose this to a. I need a play roughness. Or they're gonna be smart about it and take the I'm gonna die. But. You know, it's just, it's just one of those things, you know, I, just, I feel like I made the right play. Obviously, Max Guard was the optimal play, but I couldn't risk the fact that they'd call the Max Guard and take my Zashian out, right? I, I don't think that was worth the risk of going for actually going, like, of actually Max Guarding. It didn't just, it just didn't feel right, you know, but it's okay. I think that crit hurts, but I, I don't. They're number five on the ladder. We'll, we'll help them out. We'll help them out a little bit. I should have guarded. I really should have guarded. I, I, like, I know it was an aggressive play, but like, I don't know. If I, I don't know. Me on the opposing end, I would have at least thought, hey, they're gonna potentially max guard here. We're actually gonna get a Kyurem mirror, which is kind of interesting. And I don't love Hydreigon here. I do want it. I just wanted to throw Hydreigon on the thumbnail, guys. I'm gonna be honest. But uh, gonna get a Kyurem mirror. We've got. A very interesting Clefairy, which we don't see a lot of in these, uh, this day and age. And I don't know how I really want to do this, but I think something like Zashin and Didi is going to have to be the case. Because I'm not leading Kyurem into the Necrozma Dusk game, right? I'm just not doing it. It's never going to happen for me. I don't mind Ferrothorn in the late game here. I feel like if they go for Trick Room, Ferrothorn can definitely help me out. Uh, Hydreigon, you don't have the fire move, otherwise I'd seriously strongly consider bringing you. Uh, I might still need to bring my Kyurem. It does do a whole lot of damage to everything that's not that dust main, so I will bring it in the back here. Now, Aleki's also good, but I, something tells me we're going to see a potential Trick Room here. And because I think we're potentially seeing Trick Room, I want to cover that off here. Okay, It'll be interesting. Right, because if they go with the slow mode and I can plow through it, we're fine. Okay, this is okay for me. Now the question is, do I want to kill Grimstyle here? I think the answer is yes. I might as well take the knockout where I can get it. I really see no reason not to. Uh, I think I kill... Obviously, I was going to say fake out, but I'm... Wait, I'm not even Psychic Terrain. I really got to pay more attention. I've really got to pay more attention, but we're going to kill the Grim Snarl here, and we're just going to fake out the Necrozma. This is, guys, this team is beyond, this team is beyond my wavelength. This team is just beyond me. I like, you know, this team is just, I can't handle this. This is too much. This is absolutely wild. I mean, it got top four, so like, it's solid, but like, we're going to get the fake out. It works. I guess it works. Uh, obviously, this bl blade's not going to do crazy amounts of damage, but... Damage is damage nonetheless, right? So. Not a lot. Respectable though, that's probably a pretty bulky instant as well. So the question becomes, how do I want to do this? Is that Leftovers Necrozma? That is indeed Leftovers Necrozma. So the question becomes, who are they going to fake out here? I 
I think they're gonna fake out the Zashian, right? So I'm gonna try and get the chip damage off onto that. And I think I want to go. There's no point in following me, help I'm just gonna protect, stick on the field for an extra turn or two. See what they go for. They should fake out Trickers, right? Like I said in team preview, that just looked like the play they were gonna make, right? They're actually gonna hard switch out of Instant back into Grimstar. I'm okay seeing this. They want to preserve their intimidation. That's fair. That's smart. I respect it. Uh, they should still Trick Room, right? I still think Trick Room is the appropriate play for my opponent. A Steel Spike, though, would be... Someone please send help. Someone please send help. This is all I'm gonna say. Like, I don't know. The team is really... I don't know. This team's really, really cool. I'd like to... I think I want to drop a Leaf Seek. And I think I'm just gonna force them into Indeedee here. I think that's my best concept here. But Calm Mind Necrozma is scary. Right now they shouldn't be trying. And send me up. Right now they should not be trying to ever try and pivot back into Trick Room. Especially with my Ferrothorn on the screen. Which is really, really nice. Which at least gives me a chance. That's okay. I don't mind that. It's a smart play. I respect it. To follow me obviously means absolutely... I should lead seed myself. Could you imagine if that's how that worked? That could be some really cool, that could be a really cool drawback to follow me. Now granted, I think there's enough counterplay to it, but that would be cool. If, whenever you follow me, it would target everybody. And I know Spotlight used to work like that, but I, Spotlight is no longer in the game, so. I think I just follow me again. I wanna, I don't wanna potentially risk having the, having a fire move go into this Incinera. Okay, they're just gonna accept the fact that they're gonna get chipped. I'm okay with that. They should calm mind again, I presume. I just don't know what this indeed is supposed to do. This thing's dead weight. And they are indeed going to calm mind again. Um I part of me wishes I had Hydragon right now, guys. I'm gonna be honest. Part of me wishes I had Hydragon. Um yeah. Okay, this is okay, this is okay. We're gonna, we're gonna forget about it. This is okay. I still want to get the lead seed up, and I still want to get the follow me up. I still think it's the right play. The problem's gonna be actually killing the Necrozma. And they've been playing really well, just preserving it, making sure they're not getting chipped down, making sure nothing crazy's going on. Uh, they're gonna switch out Incineroar again, which is once again just the right play. Grimps, they're not coming back in. And I don't see a reason for them not to keep doing this. Now, if they protect again, that's... I don't know, that's good. They're gonna, they're gonna get aggressive now, and this is kind of what I wanted. I'm going to lose Indeedee here. That's a given. Losing Indeedee, Indeedee's dead. There is no doubt in my mind that this Indeedee dies. The, unless they well, follow me, so I was gonna say, unless they target a Ferrothorn for whatever reason, but it should be a Steel Spike, Indeedee's probably just gonna go down, and at this point, at least the, the good news is here, I get Leech Seed into Necrozma. Right? And there's the Steel Spike, that's fine. Indeedee tank it please? No. It is a plus two Necrozma, I don't know what I was asking for there. I think this is just an L. She comes out, okay. Okay. Gonna get some health, gonna take a little bit of theirs. Nothing crazy, but... I go into Zashian because it forces their hand right now, right? They want to get rid of the Zashian, I would assume. At least I would want to get rid of the Zashian here, personally myself, if I was my opponent. Now do they know Zashian? Do they think Zashian is going to protect? Do they just hard pivot back into instant because that's another free play for them, right? And I think what I want to do right now is I'm going to iron defense. And I am going to, I, I want to pivot, but I think for the best. The best result here, the best result is protect. I know they're gonna instant bring in instant here. I bet you don't. Huh. So they fake out Grim Snarl then? Thunder Wave, they're just gonna try to hinder me. Reflect, that's fair. I don't mind seeing that, and they're gonna probably steal spike again. They have no reason not to. Quake works too. Quake is okay. More importantly, right now, Zashian is alive and I get an iron defense right now, so. We get to at least, at the very least, play around with things here. Force them into the Zashian again. Which I think is still fine. We get an ID up. We're gonna start... I just don't know if I can actually stall out 
this Necrozma in the endgame with this Garth Rock. If we can, we're perfectly fine. I just don't know if it's stallable with Ferrothorn right now. I think if we get to like plus three, plus four defense, we should be okay. The problem with that becomes actually doing enough, you know? Because this is your last turn at uh, max, so I'm gonna leave Siege you, and I'm gonna Sacred Sword. I'm gonna hard call Instant coming in right here. I could body press, because then at least it takes the Instant out. In fact, I'm gonna do it that way. And at the very least, this is still going to do massive damage to the Grim if it decides to stay in. They're going to stay in, they're going to Thunder Whip, I'm not going to get any uh, any sort of damage out right here. That's just a good play. It's safe for them, right? The only way that backfires is if they uh, is if they miss a few minutes. So that's just the right play. I guess I could have quick attack. Would have been kind of cool just to get some damage up there. But Right now, Ferrothorn's on the field with Leaf Seed. Got, has an Iron Defense boost. The problem's going to be actually surviving what Necrozma goes for right here with Kyurem because I don't think Kyurem is really going to survive all that much you know that did nothing Ferrothorn please I know they're still spike boosted and reflected so <laughs> less good for me but it's literally going to have to come down to can Ferrothorn 1 before this and I think the answer is just no right <laughs> the answer is just no right like surely the answer is just no Unless, for whatever reason, maybe I crit? I think they should Thunder Wave the Kyurem. But they could also just know that I wanted, know that I want to protect this turn, right? Because I did that last time too, right? The, I'm going to go for the Max Quake into the Necrozma. I want to start getting some damage off out here. Like, get some damage output right now. I think they, re they recognize the fact that last time I decided to say, Hey, I'm going to protect. And then the following turn they went for the Thunder Wave, so I think they're going to kind of do the same thing. They have a safe play with Light Screen, they're also plus two. My best bet right here is that I crit, or that I somehow get a Quake up and I end up not dying to a Steel Spike, which I think is unlikely, you know? But we do get to see the Light Screen, so at least I will get, if nothing else, a Special Defense Boost on my Ferrothorn here. If nothing else. Can we get a crit? That would be actually nice. A crit would actually help us out. That is not a critical hit. Does that look like a critical hit? Because, like, it just doesn't look like one to me. They should be able to win this. I get the iron defense up again, unless Kyurem lives. If Kyurem can live this, they're going to correctly calm mind again. I respect that. I respect that quite a bit. We're going to get an iron defense up right now, which is okay. And I want an iron defense again. And this time I think I max guard. Because they have no reason to not go after Kyurem right now. I think whatever they're thinking in the end game here is going to have to be just stall out this Ferrothorn. So they should arguably be able to do it as well. I think we're also going to run out of time, to be completely honest. But I think I max guard. I want to get ID up again. Because once I get to plus 6, Body Press is actually doing some massive damage. And I'm going to guard again. Uh, the other option is just attack, but I think guarding and forcing them into Kyurem for one extra turn here is worth it. Because they should just try to kill the max here. Thunder Wave into Kyurem, that's good. And we're going to see probably Flash Cannon. Calm Mind again, that was super greedy, but super, super well played. Really, really like that play for my opponent. That's just well played, right? Because they know I'm not killing them. They can kill me whenever they want to once they get the Thunder Wave up. So we get the ID up right now. And this right now, Ferrothor, uh, sorry, Grimmsnarl, not the threat. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this Necrozma as soon as possible. I go for the Max Quake and a Body Press into it. And I've just got to get damage. We get some Leap Seed Recovery as well, or Chip on them more so than Recovery at this point. But, uh, double this Necrozma. They know I can no longer Max Guard, so I'm going to, I could go for the double. I just don't think the double's worth it. Because this way I could miss, I could dodge a T-Wave and actually get max quake damage. Which I think is nice as well. They could also maybe say, hey, they're going to go for the double and ignore me. But they're going to go Thunder Wave, which is just correct. Uh, and Flash Cannon is just going to take me out. I don't care. I'm, I know I'm Dynamax, but like... Never mind, Kyurem's good. Okay, Kyurem's going to give me a chance in this one. We're going to get a max quake up. Not going to kill, but hopefully in combination with a Body Press and the Leaf Seed, it should hopefully be enough. It should hopefully be enough. 
I can't believe Special Necrozma is just that bad. Anyways, Body Press is coming up. Body Press is going to do hopefully just shy of what we needed to do there. And I think what I want to do now is protect Kyurem, but we'll see how much they get back from Leaf Seed here, because I don't think it's enough. Like, I think I need to get an extra damage turn off. Uh, that's going to be close. I'm going to just go for the double protect. I'm definitely... Pro or do I not protect Kyurem? Because I could protect here. Yeah, I like this play better. I'm going to protect here and go for a Earth Power, I think, to kill this Necrozma. If I can get the Necrozma with the Earth Power, right? Because I think the Cure and Protect, the way I've been playing, has been really, really obvious. The Cure and Protect is... I'm just going to get Spear Break, so it doesn't really matter. But, like, it doesn't matter at all. But, like, the Ferrothorn Protect was worth it. I guess I could have protected Kyurem, but it didn't matter. I don't think it mattered anyways, but... They're gonna get lefties back. Is the leftovers enough to let them live this? And I think it might be. They're gonna live on like one, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna live on a little bit there. The Earth Power is gonna come out. I am going to Leech Seed this Grimmsnarl. And uh, pray. And pray that Ferrothorn can win this endgame, guys. Thunder Wave, which is the correct play. We do get a nice little dodge. Earth Power hopefully doesn't do 50% to me. That did nothing! Ferrothorn is broken! Okay, Leaf Seed is coming out. Um, Leaf Seed, we're gonna get some chip back. The quest, literally the only question remaining, the only question remaining is are we gonna be able to do this with enough time left? Because at some point they're gonna say, hey, it's better for us to stall the timer. And I'm keep kind of keeping an eye, I think, I think it's been about 10 minute battle so far, maybe 11, maybe 12. Nothing crazy. Right, we do get the Necrozma Dam, we get some health back right there, we're also going to get health back from the Grim Snarl. So we're back to full health, I don't remember what the other Restricted was. But if it was, if it was just Zacian, then the game's just over, you know? But we'll see what comes in, I don't remember, I don't think it was Zacian, right? And Sin comes in, that's fine. I just simply body press that slot. There's no reason for me not to right now. Flare Blitz, they're going to need to crit. I'm plus a million right now. I body press and I take that knockout where I can get it. I could protect this turn to, start to cover for a fake out, but the problem right now is I'm running out of time. If they're not going to click fake out because they're just going to take Iron Bark's chip, and that doesn't help them. Right? I could, like I said, protecting only... Like, time is against me right now, and this is what you're going to see right now. And my opponent's playing this perfectly. Right? Just playing this to a spot where... Oh, it actually slowed it down. It actually did click fake out. Huh. They actually click fake out Thunder Wave. Kind of shock, I'm going to be honest. Smart, like, I respect the play. I just don't know. I guess they figured they're going to die to a body press whenever anyways. So, maybe Protect was the right play there. But this forces them to go for Thunder Wave again, which is fair. Um, Get that chip. I go body press into this Incineroar. Hopefully Reflect runs, a, runs out this turn. Okay, that's fine. I body press into the instant. I still don't, I could just check what their last restricted was, but let's see. If they brought instant in first, I'm assuming they can't beat it. Like I said, they should slow this game down right now, and I don't know why they haven't yet. Like, my only win con is this not working for them, you know? Is them to not stall out the time and them to run out of time. Which is a win condition if Ferrothorn can actually get its attacks off. Because depending on what's in the back right now, I think I can just win. Because Ferrothorn has a clean one-shot on Instant, has a clean one-shot on Grimstar from this range. And if we can get to the 1v1, Ferrothorn actually ends up winning that, depending on what the last mod is. Uh, it was Kyurem, right? It was indeed Kyurem. So we're going to get a free body press right now. Into their Ferrothorn. Huh. This is still very winnable if I get this. I don't know if this is going to kill by any means, but it's going to do enough to a spot where they're not going to appreciate it. Okay, plus six Ferrothorn is disgusting. <laughs> plus six Ferrothorn is disgusting. We're not at the three minute mark yet. I don't bother protecting because like I said, time is against me right now. Um, Ferrothorn's kind of good, guys. Ferrothorn's kind of good. This thing is a wall. Okay, you know what? It just happened to be the spot that I got into. I, I, I like it as a win condition, but I don't think it's like a common win condition, you know? Like, I, I would have rather walked in with Hydreigon and, and, and murdered these people, you know? But unfortunate. Unfortunate, we're going to have to play the slow game here. But hey, it worked out. 
actually, actually, let me rephrase that. It hasn't worked out yet. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Just a wee bit. Just a little bit. Spirit Break, like I said, not going to do anything. They need to just go for Flare Blitz kills right now. And they need to hope I either get paralyzed or something happens. Iron Barbs gets the chip onto that. This game is now over, assuming once Instant dies, this game is over. So as long as Ferrothorn survives this, we should be okay. I ate that. That was literally my breakfast. <laughs> Plus six Ferrothorn's good, guys. I'm actually shocked that Ferrothorn was able to just kind of sit here. Now, I do need to get this body press up to guarantee the win right now. But the moment it goes up, it's game. Body press coming on out, going into that Incineroar. And Ferrothorn is going to take this one home right there. And that, honestly, you love to see. So, like, we got absolutely slaughtered with everything else. The, the rest of our team got slaughtered, you know? But Ferrothorn decided to come through and say, Hey, I got you. I honestly can't believe Ferrothorn just ate everything that, just, that it just took right there. That's absolutely insane. I'm also surprised they didn't try to play slow. Because you see the three-minute warning popping up right there. Had they gone to play slow, they would have actually won this game. But now they're going to cancel the battle, and we are going to end up 1-1 one one in today's episode. Do I want to break that? It is 27 minutes in, but I think we're going to push it. We're going to see if we can go one more game. I'm going to get a little bit aggressive, even if the game script says I shouldn't get aggressive. But we're going to get aggressive because I do want to squeeze one more game in for you guys with the team. Uh, I just want to feature kind of everything. You know, I haven't had a real chance to feature the Zashian mode yet, but I feel like I featured a little bit, but maybe we'll have to come back for another episode too. But we'll see what we can find here. But uh, thankfully we got a decent... Uh, we're going to get Ice Wing. I was going to say we get decent uh, speed at uh, finding an opponent. Speaking of Ice Wing, that is a Lunala. Um, and the question is, how do I want to do this? And Hydreigon kind of looking good right now. Hydreigon kind of looking good right now. So I'm a little concerned about the Thunderous. I'm going to be honest. But like, between Aleki, Zashi, and I, I'm almost... Like, is that really the better play? But they're going to bring Incineroar, right? Actually, do they lead Incineroar into Ndidi even though I'm not Psychic Surge? Do they know I'm not Psychic Surge? Kind of wild. Um... Let's go Zashian, let's go, let's go with my gut instinct here, cure him in the back, which I think kind of defeats kind of most of what the team is meant to do. And I think I bring Ndidi, uh, but I want Hydreigon, actually no Ndidi, let's just go Hydreigon, Hydreigon cool, <laughs> Hydreigon is cool guys, we're gonna bring Hydreigon, like I said, it, I'm probably gonna do something that's not meant to the game script in this matchup, but just because I want to see if I can force a feature on some of these Pokemon. And I still think I actually have a shot with what we're going for here. Incineroar Amoongus. I'm okay with that because I can start pivoting. I can actually pivot out of this. Not well, but I can pivot. Right? I can actually max this Aleki right now because it's going to stop me from getting Spore. And I think I'm going to stay in with Zashian. I don't see a real reason to actually switch out right now. I do want to just start getting Behemoth Blades off. On the off chance they try and say, hey... I'm going to switch out Insin. I'm going to actually Behemoth Blade. Uh, I'm going to Sacred Sword it. It does enough. I was going to Behemoth Blade for the opportunity to... I was going to Behemoth Blade for the opportunity to... Uh, in case they just did Rage Pattern, then Behemoth Blade would actually go off into the mod I wanted it to. So this isn't the safest play, right? Because they shouldn't be going for score here. But I want to see if I can kind of catch them. Which is kind of why I'm going for it, because like realistically, they should just Rage Powder and either Parting Shot or Flare Blitz here. But let's see how much damage we can do here. Moose is actually going to protect, and that's another thing that could have happened. And now I think Incineroar should just die. Max Lightning is going to go out, going to connect into Incineroar. It might not die to this, but as long as it's... Aleki's go Okay, we got lucky with the crit, but like I said, I doubled it. So as long as it wasn't Citrus Berry... I'm pretty confident, it, even if it was, honestly, that's still a neutral Sacred Sword going into it, so... I'm still confident that that thing is going down there. I think the double up was enough. Let's see what my opponent's last one is, and Aleki's kind of going to go bird here. I was kind of hoping, I was kind of hoping it would be Hydreigon, you know? But, I was kind of hoping it would be Hydreigon, but now we double Amoongus. I'll let them get Trick Room up if they do. It's not a super big deal here, I have to just double Amoongus and get damage. Because that's really the only thing Lunala is threatening me with right now. They're going to Rage Powder. I was going to double that anyway. That was the slot that I couldn't protect. So. 
Uh, max landing should do just under 50. I am magnet in terrain now, so some good damage. I think we're going to be just shy of the knockout, but we are like really heavily invested in attack. So if we pick up the knockout here, I think we just win, right? It almost would have been better had we not gotten a knockout, because then I could have quick attack next turn, you know? Which would have been really, really cool. But they're going to Trick Room, which is the correct play, and Kyogre comes on the field now. Meaning, this is still a scary endgame. The question is, do I want to do I want to go quick attack? How do I pivot this endgame now to a spot where I can actually become successful in the endgame? Because the Kyogre kind of goes crazy right now. They still have a Dynamax option. The game is not won, right? By any means, I think I sack Kyurem. <laughs> Kyurem, I'm sorry, buddy, but uh, I think you're getting sacrificed here. I'm gonna sack the Kyurem, and on the off chance Kyurem lives, max guard. Uh, see, I want a max guard, but like at the same time, just going for a max lighting on the off chance, maybe there's for whatever reason I get this off into Kyogre, it's the better play. Right, I don't think it actually effectively matters in the long run, but it definitely effectively matters now if we can get it off. They're gonna water throw. Uh, I'm dead. Okay, that was fun while it lasted. That was fun while it lasted! Um, now it comes down to basically how good is Hydra Gun. Like, how good is Assault Vest Hydra Gun? Because this is Moon Guy's theme, I'm gonna lose this. For sure. This piece is just gone. And that was a relatively safe play for them, right? Maybe I should've kept the Lecky on the field with a Max Gear. Honestly though, killing that Amoongus cost me the game. I was kind of, it would have been better had the Amoongus survived. And this is what the, literally the only question is, how good is Assault Vest Hydra God? And I think the answer is not good enough. Like, just I don't think it's meant to take this many attacks. Right? I really just don't think it's meant to take this many attacks. Um, I want a quick attack because if they don't max and they try to water scout, that does enough damage. And I ignore the Lunala because I have to hit the Kyogre. The Kyogre is the one that's going to be doing damage here. They might protect Lunala. I think they just max Kyogre and I straight up lose, but... There's the Dynamax, like I said, should just be this Kyogre right here. I'm praying that they decided it was Lunala time, but they shouldn't be maxing Lunala here. They max Lunala! Okay, so... Just what I was saying, I'm praying they decide to Dynamax Lunala. They actually do Dynamax the Lunala. So, the question becomes, is it enough to win this game? Because maybe they're calling, maybe they're expecting a Zashian Protect. But that actually does damage. Okay, that was a crit, but still. Maybe they were expecting a Zashian Protect. Water Spell, Zashian should tank that now. Because it's not max. Yeah, it's not full health. Nice. Hydreigon is going to get the attack off after, yeah, okay, after Lunala. Phantasm goes out into Hydreigon. Hydreigon is going to survive. Okay. If Dark Pulse puts Kyogre in range of another quick attack, we have a chance. <laughs> it's an outside chance, but it's a chance. Dark Pulse is going to go out. How much are we going to do here? That's not enough, right? That's not enough. I need to just quick attack again. Unless there's specs. And if there's specs, and this is going to do nothing, I think that becomes my best play. And now I Dark Pulse Lunala. Okay, still no Protect. Big Quick Attack into Kyogre. Kyogre is going to go Ice Beam correctly. Ice Beam is going to connect into Hydreigon. Hydreigon's Assault Vested. Not enough. Okay, this game's over. Um, Assault Vest Hydreigon tried, guys. It tried to pull this game back. It really did. It really, really did. Unfortunately, this wasn't enough. I burnt my max too early. Now, what could I have done, right? Maybe, like I said, maybe killing Amoongus was the wrong play, right? If I leave Amoongus on the field, it's not like it's going to spore me, right? It's not like it's going to spore me. Yeah, it, it was never going to spore me there, so we'll see. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna call it we're gonna call it there go there go English hard language. But this team was really really fun. Uh, once again, I feel like a lot of the Japanese teams are just like beyond my brain capacity. You know, like I don't play them right, and I know I don't play them right, but they're still super fun to try out. So uh, with that, guys, feel free to check out the creator. Their uh, stuff. Their description. Uh, their English language tough. Uh, their uh, all their info is in the description down below, guys. 
Uh, Hydreigon unfortunately didn't get a chance to shine, but we got to see some Ferrothorn action and some regular Regilecki action. But guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will catch you guys in a future video.